and we're recording. So, the last part of the tutorial I said was a curious puzzle sequence. And in this case, we start again with one row that has just a number one in it. And then each successive line is like reading out loud what's in the previous line. So the previous line had one one. So this line is one one. And then the previous line had two ones. So the next line is two one. And then the previous line had one two followed by one one. So one two followed by one one. And then the next line has one one followed by one two followed by two ones. And then the next line has three ones followed by um, two twos followed by one one, etc, etc. And so I set this challenge of building a tail recursive implementation of this really strange sequence. And um, again, I suggested that you break this down uh, into much smaller operations. So rather than try and produce the whole sequence at once, let's just work out this problem of I've been given a funny line and I've got to work out what the next line is. Let's pop back into our worksheet and let's have a look at doing this. So we're going to need to work out what the next line is and I'm going to reorder these. Um, I'm going to put remainder at the beginning uh, just so that I can give these default values. Um, actually, no, 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 let's not. Let's keep it the same. Let's keep it the same so that uh, it's not confusing when you watch the video compared to seeing uh, what's in there. Um, so the way I am imagining doing this is if you can imagine scanning along the line and counting what you've seen so far. I've seen one one, I've seen two ones, I've seen three ones, now the number's changed. I've seen one two, I've seen two twos. And so that's why I'm gonna start off by saying, well, how many have you seen? How many of this number? And what was the number you've seen? What's, what's the number that you're counting? And to step along the list, doing our recursive step, I'm going to keep track of a list that I'm going to call remainder because to start with we've got the whole list to deal with then we count the first number and then we've only got the tail of the list and then we count the first number in that and we've only got the tail of that and then we count the first number in that and then we've got the tail of that one etc. So uh, remainder is going to hold the parts of the list that I'm yet to process and output is going to be the list in which I'm going to accumulate uh, my output. And so that's going to start off uh, empty. And the reason I'm going to do this is because, you know, I count one one, still get, it's still a one, let's just keep counting, two one, still ones. Now that it's changed and I'm seeing twos, I can write out my three ones into my output list. And I count the twos, and then when I see the change in number, I can write out um, that I have seen uh, two twos. Okay, and so that is going to start out empty. And this is going to produce a list, a list of ints. Again, because it's recursive, I need to put the return type in explicitly. And so what do I do? Well, let's start off with, by saying if the terminal case is once we have processed the whole list, if we are now calling ourselves with remainder is now list.empty. So if remainder dot is empty, um, and I'm just going to say that's our terminal case, that's uh, where we're going to uh, want to just return something. And otherwise, we're going to want to call ourselves. Now let's just do the calling ourselves bit first. So otherwise, we're looking at say the number one and we've maybe seen one one so far and if the next number is a one we don't want to add it to the output yet so we want to just keep going so we're going to have a different case depending on whether remainder.head is the same as our number or not so if remainder.head is equal to the number that we're looking at then and we can say that in this case, well, we call ourselves and we've seen one more of them. So we can call how many uh, next line with how many is one more. We're still looking at the same number. We're no longer interested in the head of the list because we counted it. So we can throw that away and look at the tail. 
and we're not yet putting anything onto our output so we can just um, put output there all right but what if what if we've seen a different number well then we want to call ourselves and now we've only seen one of them because we've seen one of this new number that's in remainder.head um, but we want to write out that we saw uh, how many of the previous number and let's put that onto our output and uh, I'm going to put a note going here saying hmm I think I've got the order wrong on that and we will find out why in a moment and now let's say in this case well if we're done uh, let's just start off by assuming we're done and so therefore everything is in the output and again I'm going to put a little note there saying I've forgotten something okay all right so now let's start off so the beginning of the list is is just it, it, it's just the first line is just a list with one and so let's think what is the next line uh, let's just call that L because I want to do this short so I've got to call next line how many number I don't want to say zero zero in this case because if I say zero zero then when I start looking through I'm immediately going to see the number I'm looking at is not a zero and I'm going to go and end up sticking zero zero onto my output so instead I'm going to see this one this time just by saying well let's just peek at the beginning of the list and let's say we've seen one of the number that's at the head of the list and that we're wanting to um, then process the tail of the list and uh, we haven't accumulated any output yet and so that is now saying uh, oh it's saying we've not produced anything hmm what's going on here well what's happened the the remainder of this has been empty and so we've called the output which is empty but we've forgotten the ones that we've seen so far um, so again it looks like we need to put how many a number on the beginning of output and now that says yes we've seen one one okay okay and so I've I, 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 I've not forgotten something but I something might still be wrong here let's find out I'm not confident on the order that I'm printing things out so let's work out the next line of one one should be I've seen two ones okay I've seen two ones then I should say I've seen one two one one and what do we get Ooh, what's happened something is still going um, I've got a mistake in here let's stop that I have a silly mistake that I've not passed enough parameters here and so I, I I'm in this line here I've forgotten my remainder dot tail I've forgotten my remainder dot tail so let's press stop and let's press play again and compiling away phase typer etc doing some stuff doing some stuff needed to restart the compiler there and so I should get one two followed by one one but I haven't I've got one one followed by one two things are coming out a little bit backwards and the reason here is this comment that I put in here you might find there are places when you want to reverse the list we read one 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 two from left to right but cons those colons are adding things onto the left hand end of the list so at the moment as I step through the list I'm adding everything onto the beginning of the list and I want to add them onto the end of the list um, so let's uh, let's see how we can do that um, there's a few different ways we, we can kind of just play around with this really um, so it's not at the moment what we have isn't the exact reverse of what we want it's not that we want two one 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 it's that we want one two one one what if we do something cheeky what if we reverse things in a couple of places what if instead we say number 
how many onto our output and here again number how many so we swap those round now we're still not going to come out right but we should come out exactly backwards and so now reading right to left one two followed by one one and so now at the end of it all let's just reverse that list and lists have a handy method called reverse that can let us do that let's see if we've got it right one two followed by one one and let's see if the next one's right so one two followed by one one and if we get the next line from that is one one followed by one two followed by two ones yes we're getting our next lines correctly okay and that part there is actually already tail recursive if I put that in it's going to be happy because once I've done next line I'm not doing anything with it apart from just returning it okay so now let's work out how to do the puzzle list from of i and this is going to come out as a list of list of ints and again well let's start off by being naive if i is less than or equal to one then it's going to be a list just containing one otherwise um what is it we're going to say one smaller the puzzle line of it being one one smaller was puzzle list of i minus one and we want to return uh, one smaller but on the beginning of that we want to put the next line which is worked out from the last line so the head in this case because I'm kind of I'm treating the head as the bottom in this case the head of that one smaller triangle and I'm getting an error what am I getting an error oh of course I have to seed this correctly I've got to say well I've seen one of them and the number that we're looking at is um, well let, let's go val bottom line is one smaller dot head because th that's going to make this seem a little bit more understandable because I'm going to then going to say I've seen one of the first character in in there and the remainder to look at is the tail of it and so far we don't have any more output okay and now let's go puzzle list of three and we get one followed by one one followed by two ones and that should be correct let's go puzzle list of something a bit bigger let's go puzzle list of five and zero one two three four five so it should be that three one two two one one uh, as the as the bottom line of it and what are we getting and oh we've not quite gone that far we've not quite gone that far that must be puzzle line of six is yep yeah, three one two two one one okay so it looks like we're getting the right sequence out um but now this isn't tail recursive but this should start to look very very similar to uh, what we did in Pascal's triangle case so let's start off with accumulator our list of list of ints and let's seed that with if um, the terminal case if we get to the the smallest possible triangle is has is a triangle that just has one row with the number one in it and if we've got all the way back down to there return whatever we've accumulated so far and um, otherwise one smaller well that's what we passed in that was accumulator um, and so we can say bottom line is what's in the accumulator its head and instead of adding that onto one smaller we're adding it onto the accumulator um, but we're, we're, we're not calling puzzle list uh, quite correctly um, you know we're, 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 we're oops sorry what have I um, else 
So val, let's put the next line is this next line. And let's call ourselves recursively. Sorry, it was complaining that I was no longer calling uh, puzzle list. And so we want to call this for when we're counting down, i is minus one and we've accumulated the next line onto the beginning of whatever we've accumulated so far. And so that now appears to be working. Let's change the number just to prove that it's it's working. So we should get one three one one two two something like that. Oops. Why is that not printing out something different? Let's let's see if I've broken something. Let's just put a number one at the end, so we're not actually calling any of these. And it looks as if I've broken my worksheet somehow. So let's. Um, hmm. What do we do about a broken worksheet? Because you know that shouldn't be saying the same thing. Because I've left. Uh, you know, there's nothing being called in there. All right, let's paste that back in. Sorry about that. And so that should still just... Oh, here we go. Here we go. We've got an error. Recursive line value next line needs a type. There we go. It just wasn't showing me a compile error for some reason. So next line... Ah, it's complaining. It's not happy because I've named this the same thing as I've named that function. Let's just say nl. How foolish of me. I used the same variable name uh, in there, uh, which would have meant that when it tried to do next line, it would have been trying to call my value and not quite sure what it was doing. Uh, sorry about that. That was silly of me. OK, and now we can call puzzle list and get, say, the seventh uh, the the uh, puzzle list of seven, and there's puzzle list of seven, and uh, yep, sure enough, one three followed by one one followed by uh, two twos followed by two ones, uh, because we had one three followed by one one followed by two twos followed by two ones. Okay, and uh, so that is now tail recursive, um, but this is still visible to the rest of the world. Let's go and hide that one inside our function definition too uh, so it can all just be uh, nice and local and I've left a straight curly brace out there and so now that puzzle list whoops, appears to be working and it appears to be tail recursive and it's comparatively short but it involved a little bit of thinking about in terms of how to write it so next week we're going to go into higher order functions and we're going to start doing th some things that actually are a little bit more intuitive, that involve a little bit less turning ourselves upside down and looking at things backwards uh, to work out how to construct them.